A big welcome to you, Sagittarius. The um, last days now of uh, Sun in Libra, in justice, in balance, in harmony, right? Or how would I say, rather in preciseness, right? And it's really interesting because people think we can justify, right? This word justify gets us an understanding uh, of we can actually judge someone. There's the word judge, right? The moment we judge, the moment we start realizing that um, we go against nature because nature doesn't judge. Nature doesn't have any justice within it. Nature just when it strikes, when it hits, it just uh, does because it's this um, balance. That's it, it. Something is out of balance, right? That's all there is. And sometimes even people are extremely out of balance, and we are we, we are not allowed to judge them because the circumstances uh, where they grew up or what happened around them, right? Sometimes many things make that a person is extremely uh, beautiful and another one is extremely ugly. Now, when we look at the two different uh, energies of beautiful and ugly, we would immediately say white is beautiful and black, black is ugly. But, and this is this powerful understanding that the exchange, beautiful can only be beautiful because there is this ugliness. But ugliness is ugly, really ugly, right? Because that's the darkness, that's the womb, that's where the seed has to go, that's where the light has to go into this dark spot for it to be even be able to grow. And the same in this white, in this beautiful, there is this little black seed, this little black dot, right? And we must understand that we are not, not allowed to judge no one. And I really mean it, no one. Because when someone, can, someone is really in the black, is really in the ugly, is really in, in the negative, right? And the moment we judge that person, we actually amplify, we actually make it even stronger for that person to stay in the black. Now, if we look at the black and we acknowledge the little white dot in it, that whole blackness becomes a fertile earth for something to grow. And if we look at someone good, at, at someone beautiful, at someone amazing, at someone who does everything right, but we look at that little black seed, we understand the same. There can be as well this fertile energy because in the light, nothing grows. So sometimes this darkness isn't something negative. It's just the opposite of the light. And we have to come in our center, right? And to see that we can understand the righteousness. And righteousness comes from being right, right winged, right? So what am I going to do with the right wing? I need my left wing as well, right? If I want to fly, if I want to really, really go further i want to have the two together and the same then of course this is the hermetic tarot here's the rider weight he was part of this uh, brothership and he stepped out and he created his own deck his own interpretation of the kabbalah of the tree of life right personifying something right making it human so that we can memorize that much, much easier than something abstract, right? So these people are not really people. These people are planets, right? Here we have Venus and Saturn. So these people 
are actually giving us an understanding of a bigger picture of something that's happening in our solar system. And that the sun solar system, the sun is the center of our solar system, is the God, is that light, is what holds everything together. And that we have the third eye, we have that deep understanding that we can come to this awareness. And we have all the symbolism here that shows us come into the center. Don't judge people by its goodness or by its badness, because the good has a little seed of bad and the bad has a little seed of good. Come into your center and then just observe, look, become precise, become exact. And so here the position that I painted in the yoga uh, deck, right? That I want to create this um, big task. <laughs> and uh, it helps me to do these readings because I can talk about it and I can actually find while I'm talking about it. Oh my God, I can add this. Oh my God, I can do this, right? So now I've been talking about the justice for the last two weeks, right? Or three weeks since or like this this month on the 24th of October we turning into Scorpio then i will be talking a whole month about the Scorpio card and in that the card develops in that the card grows so here just so you understand the full moon and the new moon are so precise are so exact they get a pillar right here the pillars of wisdom are gray. In the high priestess, there are black and white. Here, I gave them a pillar. I gave them that powerful connection that we have this precise movement up in space, up in this universe. The sun, that clear core center energy always bright always shining always giving us the warmth and the heat to grow but also that clear thought into the third eye the symbol of venus like an opening into the universe with the cross she balances right here on top of the a Libra symbol on her tiptoes and right behind her it's her foundation to have spirit and mother matter time and space creating the cross creating actually a religion if you are nailed to that cross, if you are living that cross, your heart is right in the center of spirit and matter, time and space. That's where Jesus has, he has the heart right where the cross is, right? So they just made it a little longer, which comes from the Ankh. And here, her collarbone, right? Our collarbone uh, is like a scale that we, where she holds herself in space. And with the namaste in front of her heart, she is holding that preciseness between full and new moon, between that thought in that center. She is, this is a whole thing going on the position in India is when the women were bathing themselves and she is a female she is the harlequin to the not a uh, fool she is that counterpart to the fool she is the number 11 she is in the center of the 22 cards now you are temperance and you are the evolution of Gemini 
Here we have the male, the conscious mind. We have the female, the subconscious mind. We have the angel connected again to the sun, the higher consciousness. Here in this stage, we are searching, we're looking, we're looking for that counterpart. First of all, we need to find that within ourselves. And Gemini is opposite you, is your perfect match in a way, right? These are opposite each other. So here we begin to search and look for the partner. And then here we have found it within ourselves. You have come to the place where you are absolutely connected now, right? Where you are connected to what it means to be male and female in one. Now here, the word is awareness, right? Here, we're searching for awareness. And here the word in Sagittarius is the word experience. And here we have found the awareness and experienced it because we are literally playing with alchemical. I mean, we're like the alchemist just plays with the elements because he is the fire seeing clearly the tree behind him with the fire and she the fruit right? The sexual energy rises, the snake, the kundalini, she is water. And over here, this is air. This is an alchemical marriage. That here is the marriage is clearly consumed, is happening creates a new generation, male and female together, create a new generation. They are showing you here how they're playing with water and fire. Water and fire create steam. And through the steam, we have the daughter. But also at the same time, through water and fire, the heavy part, we get earth, which creates the sun. So this is an alchemical marriage, right? Where we become the one that's the observer and the observer plays with the elements and he's not consumed by the elements anymore. As we can see here, He's literally having that fire, having that energy behind him. She has the fruits here in the tree, right? And this whole story about Adam and Eve is about when they have realized or eaten the apple, the fruit from the Kundalini, from the snake, then they have realized something very profound it's that sexual union and they don't want you to think of a sexual union it's like a sin it's a sin to have sex at the same time it's the one thing that creates the next generation which is the angel which is god which is the light and the church or the organized religion they tried to make you feel guilty about something so profound, so natural. And I tell you the truth, the orgasm is that moment where we realize God. It's it, That's why we are so addicted to it, because it's been um, taken away from us, this natural energy, right? And of course... They don't explain it to you so clearly, right? They give you, of course, all these symbolisms, which you have still one foot in the subconscious, right? You are playing here with water and fire. You're creating here this alchemical mixture. 
the path is up to the crown to Keter, which is the, the number one, which is the crown, which is the light, which is always the crown in a way, it's the sun. Because here, this is the solar disk, this is the sun creating the enlightenment. And then here we have the triangle, right? These three points, one, two, three, create this upward pointing triangle. Here the triangle is showing you these one, two, three people becoming the tri tri triangle here. Above the triangle is the Hebrew word God, right? If you don't know Hebrew letters, you look at it and think it's part of the dress. No, above it, on the triangle, it's the word God. And this is Angel Michael, because Angel Michael is the direct uh, ascendant of God energy. Now, the... The card that I drew for you is, the yoga card, is when you think of this alchemical connection, usually the red goes pointing upwards and the blue points downwards because water is heavy and fire goes up. But I wanted to do it the other way. On top of it is the constellation drawn. This is the pigeon pose, which is mostly the pose that um, shows um, pigeons stay together or the swan. There's no swan pose in yoga, I think. So I wanted to show this in a different way because when we have then the alchemical formula, it is almost like when they come together, and here is it, they come together, this awareness of combining them together creates out of the fire something more that goes downwards. And the fire creates of the water something that goes up in the steam. Right? So I kind of changed it. So then here, the alchemical mixture is that I bring the, the the top together with the bottom. I let go of the past, right? And I go deep within and there I can rise mentally up into the lotus flower. And again, the, the, the symbolism, the marriage of now the red is facing up and the blue goes down, right? Because now... It is properly consumed. There's no more like, you know, you and me. And yes, you are the male and I'm the female. And we have to fight each other. And we have to figure this out. No, it's like an alchemical energy. And now the proper or the respectful um, or like the energy is then reversed where the fire goes up and the water goes down. And it's restored. The peace, the understanding is absolutely restored here in this picture, right? You, the deeper down, the deeper within you go, the more you understand what is really happening here. You are the night of fire, right? Because... The interesting part in all of this is that the the word of this uh, of your card is samek, and samek is like a pole, like a tent pole, right? Something that we can put, and it's this. He's the center. He's the pole that erects something so much more bigger than we could ever imagine. That's why he's also an angel, right? We become an angel when we mix these, these two elements together. And you holding that pole, right? You are finding that creativity, that sexual spark, that uh, 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 higher awareness within you, right? That why also the horse is rising. It's the only time where a horse is actually going upwards right the other horses one is just literally standing the other one is just putting very elegantly one foot up and the other one is just like going forward is going straight forward and you're the only one that goes up up 
rise in you searching for this spiritual awareness. Your birthday from the 13th of uh, November to the 11th of um, December, right? Um, that's when this card or this court card is for you. Otherwise, it's the King of um, Cups or the Queen of Pentacles. Have a look in the description box below. I have listed all of the um, dates of the court cards. One last thing, then we go to your reading. Now here, the pink color, right? It's not because women like pink and I've painted it pink. No, it's one of the oldest colors they found uh, in a fossil that was 1.1 billion years old, right? Molecular fossil. And in that fossil, they found the only color was pink. There was nothing else. There was no green. There was no nothing. There was pink. And so the pink, in a way, is the Wheel of Fortune, which is the card before 11, the 10, right? The, the Wheel of Fortune is always spinning. And so this pink color is actually the pink as the Venus behind spinning right and so in this spinning in this constant flux of changing life is constantly changing there is this concentration there is this focus there is this clear awareness right and so i just want you to see that this is the wheel of fortune being behind being before the 11 after you comes then Scorpio, which is now on the 24th of October, starts Scorpio season. Here we have, again, the fish is connected with that subconscious, right? In the subconscious is the collective energy that we have lived over thousands and thousands and thousands and millions of thousands of years. And we rising again and again out of its ashes like the phoenix rises out of the subconscious to create a new seed, a new awareness again and again. And that's what we do when we take this position. When we take Scorpio, right, it is such a difficult pose to take. It needs all your attention needs all your focus and you're literally letting go of your mind of your ego of your thinking and you're letting the feet that know where to go literally they really know where to go take over all right let's go to your reading right otherwise we're gonna be here forever <laughs> so here we have a new seed. Oh my God. We have an energy. We have a spark. We have you, the knight of wands, has that spark, has that element, has that seed, that thought, that idea, that wand, right? Ace of wands. You're here and have this connection. Then you worked yeah, you worked a lot. So now while you work, you get this spark, you get this idea, right? So what's underneath? Oh, and you had a difficult time, right? This time is also a world pain, right? Sometimes they call this a world pain. This is Saturn in Libra. And this world pain can get to us, right? But you, nevertheless, you went to work because that's the sun in Virgo, right? The sun in Virgo, it's like we work, we love to do what we do, right? We enjoy it. And that's when this creative spark, this idea came to you. So beautiful. And your central card of the nine is the strength card, Leo. And it means you understand deep within, because Leo is combining as well like you do, 
combining water and fire, we combining here more the um, pure mind with the wild mind, right? So, so the wild mind is just that sexual energy. And the white is that uh, pure uh, awareness or that purity sometimes the church likes to bring to us as that the only thing that really matters and it doesn't. It's the combination of red and blue. It's moon and sun. It's the combination of wild and not wild, right? Now, which one is better, right? So here we see through the heart, you are able to combine this wild side within you, right? And that's your central card. So you start your first three cards. So, sorry, this, right, gives you strength, gives you the power this new idea gives you the strength, gives you the power to combine, to come together. Because you have had a little difficult time, right? You realize there is not such a just or not such a... There, there is a world that judges, judge, judges other people. And sometimes we also do something wrong, right? So who are we to judge someone and so here we see that you have come to this awareness because here with the nine of wands, the moon in Sagittarius, right? This is your element against all odds, right? You are rising, you going up and you had some difficulties. The nine is completion, goes with the hermit card, the number nine. There is a completion happening. So against all odds, you have found an inner strength to rise, right? And you found a clear light. You found that creativity or sexuality or this awareness has helped you go against all odds. And even this card, which is Jupiter in Gemini and Gemini is always about um how would I say Gemini is always about exactly that search that looking for things and so sometimes we might go into our mind and start looking too much for things right wanting too much to be uh looking for something that it, that's you know i mean as you can see she's 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 stuck in something and it's just a reflection it's really beautifully done because the original card is that's why i'm like trying to i always have my rider weight deck here and i'm just opening up to find the card which is this one jupiter in gemini and Gemini is searching, Gemini is looking for the awareness, right? He's really searching for it. And Jupiter is always about abundance. It's also to be generous. It's also to be believing in miracles or hope or luck, right? So here you are against all odds rising up, but there is something within you that's still like not really believing that you could go against all odds right there is this in something so, so unjust like happening right but the justice card is about preciseness it's about these two clear pillars right knowing that they have more power than us judging someone that fell over just because he moved a little bit his his hands and already we're falling over it's just it's almost impossible for anybody to be absolutely just. There, it's almost. I mean, it's 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 like it takes someone a lot of training to become absolutely in its center, 
and this is where we are down here right so this is the big universe this is the big picture and down here we are humans we are experiencing a little bit of that right we for us to to come to that place it's like oof, right so so let's not judge no one now the next row right and as you can see your central card you are searching there's another knight the knight of cups which is a pisces he's searching he's looking he's the romantic he loves to take you out and does everything and here leo right in your center so either there is venus person right so there is here a libra there is here a Leo and there is here a Pisces, right? Look with the court card in the description box below and the major arcana are like the normal zodiac signs month. So you want to jump like the fool into all, into the, the, the ocean of possibilities, into the flower of life, because here we are able to recreate a new story, a new circle, a cycle of life, right? And you have the, the strength because you searched for love. I always read like it's for you. It's not because you have a partner or you're looking for someone. Besides that, I will point out uh, there could be a little love story going on, right? That gives you strength um or with a with a with a leo right maybe you have a leo in your life but that's like two fire signs coming together so it's hot right but here also a pisces which is a water sign which is also a lover he's like you a horse right he likes to sit on his horse so there you have a similarity right you find each other though you you do things completely different you go up and he's just like he puts up one foot, right? Just one. So it's very beautiful. But you want to start a new beginning so that you can, again, let go of. This is the Ten of Swords and the Seven of Swords. And again, a Libra, a court card. So the Ten of Swords is Mars in Gemini. And Mars is always about the will, the courage to move forward, to go into another, you know, cycle. Because 10 is, again, a new cycle. But on another level. On another, on another level that you have understood something. And you have understood something because here comes, again, Libra. Look at the court card dates. And you moving towards her, right? You have realized, wow, I, I wake up. I don't want to be bound by my own thinking. I don't want to be bound by this Gemini search. And you have come now to a, a clear ending the dawn is coming this is the dark night of the soul you trans um you you shifted into it i'm gonna give you the um, card because it looks absolutely brutal when we look at that card it's like okay <laughs> right and it's sometimes i'm like wow it's like the sun in gemini it's like all these thinking all this extreme searching in your mind has left you literally nailed down it's that dark night of the soul is that moment where you like suffered so much but you see the dawn is coming up and she shifted it to the ten swords are above her she lifted them and she really painted the dawn it's a much much friendlier card nevertheless it's like you have realized a big step 
and then you're moving forward right and sometimes this is a little bit of a sneakiness right um they talk about that you walking away from something that you sneaking away you don't want to how would i say you don't want to face the situation you're sneaking away so i give you a little bit the the the, the meaning by, of this card it's like deception or betrayal taking only what's needed right so that's a positive thing the universe bearing witness to true intentions like you having true intentions to move forward right to move to the queen of of sorts getting away with something that is a, uh, getting away with something right being strategic again it's a positive thing being grateful for the resources you have also positive right moving silently and quickly so since you have realized and that's where i rather see you moving silently and quickly you have realized this and yes it's not easy to just immediately let go of all the thinking of all the thoughts of all this like brewing and right because where are where where were these thoughts going where, where where are they coming from right so they either like the depression comes from thinking too much into the past and stress comes from thinking too much into the future but where, when are you doing it? In the present moment. In the present moment, you are realizing that you are thinking about the past that's not existing anymore. anymore. And in the present, you're realizing that you're stressing yourself out because you're thinking constantly about the future, which is not here either. So you are silently letting go of three and you're already coming to seven. And then you realize, oh, wow, I let go of three. Well, well, look at that. You arriving at the queen, at that one thought, at that one empowered thought, at that one sword, at that one thing that goes into your third eye. And you did it. Now, of course, you can also go towards the Libra that you have met and that Libra has told you, hey, you got to do things a little bit more right. Maybe this person told you, you can do it. Right? You can do it. You have that idea. You have that spark. Go for it. Right? Don't worry. Don't think too much. And then you had here the lover coming to you and the leo they all supported you and they all said hey go for it go for this new beginning find your strength find your love and you did and you did and you said okay yeah you're right libra i'm going here i'm going where you told me to go into this clear thought, into this clear thinking. I do not want to be, you know, I'm letting go. Beautiful. I mean, I, it's letting me know that you really, you have help, right? And you went through whatever you went through. So I'm just going to ask um for the first row no i'm actually i'm just gonna see what comes out and i will um see where the cards speak to uh here we go yeah, so the Eight of Air, right? And again, the Eight of Air, as we can see, is like telling you, yes, you did bind yourself. You are bound by your own, and that's Jupiter. Jupiter, you binding yourself. You're not seeing the luck. You're not seeing the happiness. You're not seeing something that could be um, 
yeah abundant right jupiter is abundance is hope you don't see the hope but here in this deck she's rising up to the cloud she's rising high and she's saying yes you can do it right and if you want i can read to you the eight of air it's so much more um beautiful the way they explain the eight of air release from denial seeing things as they are and clarity with spirit at my side encouraging me i open my eyes to see things as they really are to be disillusioned is to free myself from illusions that keep me from the growth and healing i deserve so I bid goodbye to illusion that have clouded my vision. Honesty gives me strength and courage to face whatever I have to face. So beautiful. And of course, the eight is connected to the strength card, right? This is the number eight. So you have the strength, you have the courage to go and get this out. So now you have 888. It's a lesson in life when there is 888. It's a new chapter in your life beginning of self-love, of strength. Nice. Okay. So let's see what else is coming out. Okay, two. Okay, two of air is making a decision. Two of air is saying, all right, I need to find my inner peace. And when you find your inner peace, you are able to jump. You are able to let go, right? But mostly you decided between these two that you really understand clearly that 10 or 7 thoughts in your head and going making you crazy is too much. Two is normal because we have then the awareness of black and white. Two can bring a certain uh, inner peace already of knowing, yes, there is black and white. It's connected to the high priestess. There is this intuition. And two can then finally bring you to the one, right? In the center, you know you have these two options always. You always have black and white, right? But you are deciding now to be in the one thought, in that one energy. And that will start a new beginning for you because the page of fire on the bottom of the deck is here for you. And of course, temptation sometimes still is around, right? But you are understanding now clearly that this is a new beginning. This is looking at a new beginning because a new beginning, when we look at the new beginning, at the new you, right? Page of Fire is you. This is you as a new beginning, right? A new beginning of starting to understand temptation is always there. Temptation is exactly then when you come into your center, it's also like the two wings, right? Because this is, the, when we look at the devil card, the devil is when we get down into the physical, into the material world, when we get stuck with the money, with the food, with the intoxications, right? So in the new beginning, you, you, you want to know that you don't want to make the same mistake again because there's a new love coming to you. When you begin new, right, the cycle begins again in December. You will find a new love. You will find 
a new um, connection which will rise you up from the ashes, which will rise you and bring you to a whole new level. This new love, you will find a new love, right? And again, the cycle begins again. Because this is not really the devil for me. For me, this is temptation. It's the temptation of the material world. But I think you understand in this second round, or maybe the third round, right? Second round, I don't know, that you don't want to do it the same way like you did it before. You have learned a big lesson which leads you to start fresh, a new love coming to you. There we go. Thank you for watching. Again, my dear Sagittarius, remember you are the element fire, right? When the your element is, we the day is always a little warmer. We like to eat uh, protein on uh, the days of uh, of a fire day. We like to eat protein. Your um, part body part is your uh, upper thighs, right, and the veins. Make sure you uh, do an upside down, right? Make sure, sure sometimes you bring your legs up and then your sense organs are connected. You are connected very much to the senses, to the five senses. That's to uh, you as that um, person. And I just wanted to let you know that I had a dream. The last thing I want to tell you, I had a dream last night where when I do yoga um, in there in Shavasana, right, which is the pose where they relax after the practice. And I lead them through a deep, deep letting go, right, of all the title, of all like uh, the job they do and hair, hair color. Uh, skin color, eye color, age, all these things like letting go. And so they can like when they come out, they can begin a new, right? You, so you're beginning a new cycle. And I had this dream last night that in the dream, I lost my bag. And I remember I got out of the subway and I stood outside and I realized, oh my God, I walked completely had like literally no bag, no nothing. And it was this beautiful feeling. But for a moment, I woke up and I, I mean, not wake up in the, I, in, I, I realized in my dream, I was like, oh my God, I don't have my bag. And in my bag is all, all the papers or all, all the things, right? And I was like, oh my God, what am I going to do now? And I realized I need to go to uh, the station and tell them I left my bag in the subway. Do you have, have you found it? I was like trying to get back my identity. And I realized it was not possible. In a way I knew I was like, okay, I think I lost everything. And I have to start fresh and I have to begin anew. So just to let you know, right? And then I woke up, of course, in the morning and I was like, oh my God, it's just a dream, right? But begin you, know that this is possible, right? Begin fresh, this, let yourself fall into a new adventure, into a new you, begin fresh. There we go. Thank you for watching. Love and light to you, my dear Sagittarius. See you again then in Scorpion in November. Namaste.